Howdy again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this fantastic video of the destruction of 30 windmills is being filmed about one week after part one. I hope you have watched part one where we travel down this exact waterway, and the windmill was still standing at that time, and at the beginning of this video, of course, you saw this windmill hit the ground spectacularly. Notice how it broke apart in the middle and I'll show you a close-up of that. So you're going to see some scenes here that you have never seen before and you will never see again on YouTube. This is a YouTube original. Just as in the last video I am with my friend and we are in a Polaris Ranger and we're going to pull up right here to the site of the destruction and see some fantastic close-ups of the destruction of what the explosives or dynamite or whatever it is that they used to drop this huge windmill. Pay very close attention now as I point things out. That is the cage there or the hoist that the men could uh, uh, ascend to the top of the windmill, but there also is a ladder here. Now, here is my hand showing you how thick the walls are of the tower, about inch and a quarter. Look at the cables that go up to the top. Look at the thickness of this piece, about six inch by six inch. That's the doorway of the tower or what is left of it and uh, there's various pieces of debris all over the ground and into the cornfield. Now look at the cable. I think this is the cable that actually brought the electricity down to the ground level but I'm not totally sure of that. Look at the diameter. If I would have had a flashlight I would have crawled through that hole and worked my way all the way to the top of the windmill, but I would have been on my knees and it would have been a little bit on the painful side. Looking on the ground, you can see various pieces, some of them triangular, that were cut out just prior to the blast to weaken it. Walking around it now, we'll take a look inside. I'm going to climb up on the stairs. Again, look at the thickness of the members right there at the doorway. And now looking down into the base of the windmill, it's really a mess. Look at all the cables and wires and uh, damage caused by the blast itself. There are some pieces of wire on the edge there, I believe, that had to do with the explosive charges, but I'm not totally sure of that. Looking down the cornfield, that is where the new windmill will be placed. I think I told you something incorrect in the last video. I don't think there's much left to salvage here. Everything will go to the scrapyard, as far as I know. All of the destruction happened in a microsecond. Again, I pose this question. These windmills are only 15 or 16 years old. Why are they be take, being taken down? Did they ever pay for themselves without subsidies? Note the cage marked Avanti. Again, that is the cage or the elevator that took men or supplies to the top for repairs. Look at all of the uh, shrapnel holes from the explosion in the sheet metal. They were all over the place. It was just like a war zone. I wish I hadn't picked that up. My hand was filthy for the rest of the trip. Now I'm going to walk from the base clear up to the working end of the windmill, which is about 200 feet, but I'm going to show you something here that I believe is incredibly interesting. When the windmill hit the ground, 
it broke in two right at the joint but as we examine the bolts that held them together look at there's hundreds of bolts that are what inch and a half in diameter or so some are bent and every one when you look at the close-up is stripped off at the end where apparently the nuts pulled off upon impact. Can you see the stripped threads? I thought that was really interesting. Now I'm approaching the generator end. It's incredibly dry here. It hasn't rained in weeks. The corn is under great stress, all caused, of course, by global warming. Look at how the earth was pushed up upon impact, almost like a bulldozer moved it, but it happened in a microsecond. And you're going to see some really interesting things here now as we examine this. Lots of oil on the blades from leaks in the oil box, the gearbox. The farmers hopefully will be reimbursed for all the damage to the crops because they're going to build new windmills and there'll be even more damage. Now this is one of the blades there's my buddy walking up toward the very tip. You can see how it's cracked and how really dirty it is. You, you, they look so clean from the ground and there's the actual tip of the windmill that broke off upon impact. And it has delaminated. There's a relatively large rectangular beam there in the middle for strength. I'm not sure if they use fiberglass or graphite. These windmills were destroyed with the blades on them. You'll see other windmills later in this video where they have removed the blades because it's in a different county and they are under different regulations. Again, look at the massive amount of earth that was displaced upon impact. And here's some other pieces that I'm kicking around. The cable that I just kicked there runs the full length of the blade and it is for lightning rods. Okay, here is the actual generator. I did walk in there, but it was too dark. The footage did not turn out. There's the light. See that big round light that people hate? They blink red at night and there's the trap door that would allow the men to get to the top of the windmill to get out of the actual housing and onto the top for whatever service that they might have to perform. There again is the light that I'm pointing to. Much dreaded by local residents. I suppose there are LEDs, I'm not sure. And there is a little uh, wind indicator, I think, that turns the windmill on and off or feathers the, the blades or adjusts the pitch on the blades depending on the speed of the wind. I believe that's what it's for, but some of that I'm just deducing. I do not know for positive, but that's probably what it is. And I did go inside there, but I have no footage. I was hoping to see the generator and the bearings, but I could not. But th those are laminations there, I believe, from the generator. That silicone steel and it delaminated upon impact. Again, these are only 15 or 16 years old and they are being scrapped. That's a very heavy piece, that's why I, I kicked it. Debris all over the field that has to be picked up or plowed under. There's the laminations again. It's rather windy today. You know, these windmills do not produce electricity unless the wind is blowing. I don't think the Department of Energy understands that because they aren't nearly as smart as we are. Now there's a trap door on the bottom of the windmill that they used to raise oil barrels and other materials they needed when they were constructing or repairing these units. And there's a delaminated blade. 
all the layers of fiberglass and or graphite, I'm unsure. I forgot to mention earlier, but when the windmill hit the ground, the tower moved from the base by about 15 or 20 feet. Now, here is a bolt that broke off. See how it is sheared? It looks like it was high strength steel. But also look at the thread marks on the base. So I'm not sure exactly what happened during the explosion that caused that, but it's only on the one side, the side where the, uh, the windmill actually, the tower actually fell from that direction. And there's my buddy reading the manual for the hoist, which apparently was never used, and it's in about 12 languages, which always makes us mad. Okay, we're moving down the line to look at a few more windmills. Remember, about 30 in all were dropped within a few days. You saw them all earlier in my other video when they were just notched and being prepped for uh, destruction. Notice the scrap truck sitting here. Some of the towers are right near the road and very easy to look at and photograph. Others are farther into the fields and we did not have access to them. And down the road we go to see a few more. Pretty impressive on the ground and in the air, but the prairie is now beautiful from a distance without these ugly towers all over the place, although there are other towers in the, uh, in the distance there that you will see here presently as we travel along. A lot of destruction. There were a few other people around looking at these, but not many people were interested. So what you're seeing is an exclusive. As we approach this one, you will see that one blade came within about eight feet of the road. I think they had that calculated. And the roads, of course, were blocked off during destruction. And now we pulled in along another gator here and talked to these folks for a while and we were all pondering why they took these down. Now I'm walking along the tip of the blade here and again the tip broke off and you can it probably would have hit the road but it kind of folded back into the grass here as you can see. So that's about the last five or six feet of the tip of that blade, shattered. Now we're traveling down a country road, it's a gravel road, and they have covered it with molasses, believe it or not, yes, molasses to prevent dust, uh, or for dust control. There's another one that bit the dust, but looking over into another county now, at this windmill, they have removed the hub and the blades, and it was required by the rules of that county. I don't know why it's different than the other one, because it must have cost a lot to do that compared to just blowing the whole thing to smithereens. And off in the distance, you'll see some windmills, and not all of those are scheduled for destruction. Remember, there's more than one windmill farm. The piles of gravel you see are going to be used at these intersections so that the large equipment can make the corners. That's what that's all about. Yet more farmland taken out of production. And as we approach this area, you're going to see quite a few windmills down, but in the direction I'm pointing the camera now, that is, I believe, the one that uh, had a fire. I showed it in the other video and it <laughs> it had burned up. So go back and watch that if you haven't seen that. And uh, that's one of their sites there where they keep the equipment. And off in these fields, several more defunct windmills. And this is a repeat as you watch the windmill bite the dust. Very, very impressive. Scary, too. 
Now here are about 10 still pictures that I took. Be sure and leave a comment. What do you think about these windmills? Did they ever make money? Were they subsidized? Are they really a viable form of sustainable electricity? Or is it all a fraud? It, no one will tell me the truth. It, everything is slanted. I would love to find the truth. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you have watched part one. Tell your friends about this. And thank you for watching my videos. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. And thank you to my buddy for taking me on this trip on his ranger. See you next time.